Today, we will look at how low-pass filters work in practice. A low-pass filter is a filter that passes signals from DC, that is 0 Hz, to the cutoff frequency, but attenuates the signal with a frequency above the cutoff frequency. An important characteristic of the filter is the slope. All our filters have a slope that guarantees 60 dB of second harmonic suppression. These filters are usually used after a high-frequency amplifier, such as MMIC, to suppress higher harmonics or placed at the mixer output. We produce filters for frequencies from 1 MHz to 1 GHz. Filters are available not only for standard frequencies, including 144, 433, 868 MHz, etc., but it is also possible to order a filter with an individual frequency. You can view the full list and buy the filter you need by following the link in the description under the video. For example, let's take a filter at 100 MHz. This filter will attenuate all frequencies above 100 MHz. First, let's see what a 100 MHz signal looks like without a filter. For this, we will use our DDS model 9910. As you can see, the signal spectrum is already quite clean. In addition to the fundamental frequency of 100 MHz, a small second harmonic is visible at the frequency of 200 MHz. But the spectrum can be further improved by suppressing the second harmonic. To do this, we connect an LPF filter with a frequency of 100 MHz to the DDS output. If the DDS output had a frequency of, for example, 400 MHz, we would need an LPF filter with a frequency of 400 MHz. This is what the signal looks like after connecting the LPF filter to the output of DDS9910. The second harmonic is completely suppressed. We can conclude that the filter works very effectively. Let's conduct an even more visual experiment. Let's amplify the signal at the DDS output using the MMIC RF amplifier model MRFA89. We see that a large number of high power harmonics have appeared in the signal. This occurs due to the fact that any amplifier, due to its non-linearity, generates harmonics. Harmonics can interfere with other devices operating at adjacent frequencies, and therefore, after the amplifier, it is necessary to clean the signal from higher harmonics using LPF filters. Now let's connect the filter after the output of the MMIC amplifier. Here is what the signal looks like after connecting a low-pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 100 MHz to the amplifier output. It can be seen that the filter suppressed all harmonics. This proves the filter's exceptional efficiency. Before we move on to the most interesting part, I would like to show what the frequency response of the filter looks like. Here the signal passes through practically without loss, but starting from the frequency 100 MHz, it sharply attenuates. Since our filters are made according to the elliptical filter design, they have the maximum slope and maximum stop band suppression compared to any other LPF filter designs. Three dips are clearly visible on the frequency response graph. They are due to the presence in the circuit of additional capacitors parallel to the inductance. As a result, three parallel resonant circuits are formed, which act as a plug filter. Another advantage of our filters is the symmetrical arrangement of capacitors on the board. This arrangement of components is recommended by Analog Devices Application Note 837. The presence of symmetrical capacitors provides effective suppression in the stop band. This is what the classic arrangement for filters without symmetrical capacitors looks like. It can be seen that it suppresses worse in the stop band than a filter with symmetrical capacitors. Let us show a clear difference in the design of the Chinese filter and ours. In Chinese, there are no symmetrical capacitors, but ours does. Finally, let's look at why it is important to use a filter with an appropriate cutoff frequency. For example, let's take the same filter at 100 MHz. First, we will gradually increase the frequency at the DDS output, starting from the 80 MHz frequency. As long as the DDS output frequency is less than the cutoff frequency, the amplitude of the main signal remains unchanged. But as you approach the cutoff frequency, the amplitude begins to decrease smoothly, and after 100 MHz, the amplitude decreases sharply. This happens because the frequency at the DDS output no longer matches the filter. It has become higher. Now, filters suppress not only harmonics, but also the fundamental signal. Now we begin to smoothly reduce the frequency of the main signal. It can be seen that more and more harmonics at multiples of the fundamental frequency begin to appear in the signal. 
This is because the filter passes the signal in the range from DC to 100 MHz. That is, for the main frequency 10 MHz, and the filter must have a cutoff frequency equal to 10 MHz.